Geography people, it's Mr. Barnes here. I just wanted to make a video about thermohaline circulation. That's the Great Ocean Conveyor Belt. Uh, I got a request to make a video about this just to clarify some things, so let's get right into it. You can find this section in your syllabus right here under Explain the Thermal Transfer of en Energy Within Oceans and the Importance of the Ocean Conveyor Belts. So if you click on that, it should bring you down to this page. Uh, what you're going to want to do is just scroll a bit till you get to this map. All right. So let's take a look at this map and what this map actually means. The thermohaline circulation. There's two main important things that you're going to want to remember. Okay. The first one is this title, thermohaline. All right. You can break this up into two separate. Uh, words thermo meaning temperature and haline meaning salinity or salt all right the reason that it's called the thermal haline circulation or the temperature salt circulation is simply because the ocean water is driven on the surface by wind but driven through the depths of the ocean by the temperature and salinity. We also um, say that the, the density of the ocean water is dependent on the temperature and the salinity. So um, if you can remember from physics class, cold, salty water will sink more readily than warm clear water and so um, the the cold water is more dense and because it has more salt in it that causes it to be more dense and so um, that's the the main idea with the the name itself thermohaline circulation so the um, the density gradient is what drives the deep water through its ocean basins. Now, before I get too far ahead of myself, let me just describe what's happening. What you have on the surface if, is you have uh, winds blowing that surface water, all right, in the northern hemisphere in this direction and in the southern hemisphere in this direction, okay? So warm waters are blown by, uh, by wind along the surface where they get too close to the poles all the while becoming saltier and saltier until they reach the poles in which case they actually sink down into the depths of the ocean and the reason they sink again is because of that thermal healing um, engine they call it even the uh, the great ocean conveyor and it's the, the salt and the, the temperature of the water that drives this, this conveyor. So you have, again, the warm surface currents moving along the equator and up into the poles where the water becomes dense because it is too salty and cold. And so it drops down into the depths of the ocean where it's then driven along ocean basins um, as this water up on the surface, you know, piles up behind it, it drives that, that deep water along the ocean basins where it will finally upwell in the, the southern ocean, typically, or it might, you know, do a whole loop around this uh, Antarctic continent where then it will finally upwell. The, the total time is estimated to be 1,000 to 1,500 years for the uh, one, let's say one water molecule to make its way around the entire, uh, you know, circulation of the planet. All right. So that's, that's the one first main thing. So that's the first, first main idea. Okay. The second main idea is what you'll find a little bit lower on your uh, Google doc. You'll see it here. The second main idea is why the thermohaline circulation is important. So the first thing that you need to know is you need to know how it operates. And then the second thing you need to know, this is your second main idea, okay? Your second point is 
uh, why it's important that the thermohaline circulation occurs in the first place anyways, all right? The main two reasons is because it regulates the climate. So in the form of heat, it, it transfers heat around the planet. Um, and that essentially regulates the climate. It keeps um, the certain areas of the planet either warmer or cooler so that um, we have a proper regulation of the climate. It also, another thing it does is it, um, it determines how much sea ice is in the polar regions. The thermohaline circulation actually is a big factor in uh, determining how much sea ice there will be during the winter time. Um, so you can see here it moves heat from the tropics to the poles and again uh, it, um, it determines the amount of sea ice. The second thing that it does is it uh, transfers nutrients from one portion of the ocean to another. Typically, what you get if here's our ocean, right? And this is the, the continents here, and this is the, the ocean basin. What you'll get is um, if there's a continental shelf and the, the water is driven this way, you'll get all these nutrients here being upwelled. Okay, that's called upwelling. This is a geographic term that you're going to need to remember. Upwelling is when nutrients are brought to the surface from deep ocean currents driving that, that nutrient-rich water back to the surface, at which point what you get is you get surface winds then blowing it back across the, uh, the, the surface of the ocean back toward you know, an, another location. Um, so this is really important because it does a whole bunch of things in terms of providing nutrients for plants and animals um, and livelihoods for you know, millions of people that rely on these plants and animals to be in those locations uh, regularly. So uh, that's again the thermohaline circulation and the two main ideas that you're going to want to remember for the thermohaline circulation. So I hope this video helps.